a very good morning to all my students those who are watching this video i hope you all are well at home today i'm going to teach you the next chapter of geography the earth major landforms before i start this chapter i would like to give you the introduction what are landforms now landform is the surface of a planet which is not uniform there are hills and mountains and valleys these distinct features are known as landforms now these landforms are categorized into different parts they are mountain plateaus and plains now first i would like to give you how the landforms are formed landforms are formed due to weathering river elevation sinking and erosion of the soil and these process constantly shaping the surface of the earth and this doesn't happen overnight and we are able to notice this over thousands and hundreds of years later we are able to notice these changes in the landforms landform originate from these geological process now these geological process are again categorized into two major process one is external process that is known as exogenous process and the other one is internal process which is known as endogenous process external process means effects caused by the external factors such as rain or river or wind erosion occurs when material on the surface like soil and rocks which are called sediments when they are deposited and placed in different parts of the earth these natural processes change the surface of the earth so erosion and deposition are the process that are occurring externally internal process occur inside the surface of the earth it happens beneath the crust the internal process like volcanic eruption shifting of the tectonic plates are caused because of the intense heat in the earth core that causes molten rock in the mantle layer to move and as they move part of the earth's surface are either pushed up or pulled down or bent or broken and this creates the new kind of landforms now let's start with the first category that is mountain now mountain as you have seen they are conical in shape and they are much higher than the surrounding area they are higher than the hills and they have pointed peak mountains generally occur in a chain or a line that's called a range and now a small mountain is called a hill and a hill is generally have a round top a low land between the hills or a mountain is called a valley and there are some examples of the mountains like mount everest in the himalayas is the world highest peak and you know the height of this mountain is 8848 meters above the sea level now depending upon how the mountains are formed they are again categorized into three main kinds they are fold mountains block mountains and volcanic mountains fold mountains are created when two tectonic plates push hard against one another and these plates then form wrinkles or fold because of the enormous push force between them and scientists classify these fold mountains into 
two parts again they are young fold mountains and old fold mountains according to the mountains age the young fold mountains are between 10 to 25 million years old block mountain occurs when there is a crack of the earth crust which is also called faulting the cracks or rifts you must have noticed when there is earthquake you must have seen the cracks in between the earth's surface they are called rifts and these rifts are called as faults and due to this sometime a chunk of a land on one side of a fault may get pushed up or may cave in so the raised chunk is also called a block mountain or a fault block mountain or horst and the sunken portion that goes down of a rift is known as a rift valley or a graben now let's see what are volcanic mountains volcanic mountains are formed by magma rising up from the mantle to the crust of the earth and when this magma on reaching the surface cools and hardens and it piles up around the opening it gradually forms the mountain and such kind of mountains are known as volcanic mountains and a very good example of a volcanic mountain is mount kilimanjaro in tanzania and mount etna in sicily and mount fujiyama in japan now let me discuss with you some importance of mountains as you know mountains are generally cold and there's very little level land for growing crops or for building houses and due to the temperature cold temperature it is not uncommon for the mountains to develop ice on them in some mountains there are permanently frozen rivers of ice they are called as glaciers and because of the steep slopes of the mountains there is a less land available for proper farming now if you see even mountain slopes are often have forest which give us wood and many other useful things many tourists likes to visit mountains to enjoy the scenic beauty and they want to take part in the adventure sports such as skiing mountaineering and river rafting so our next topic is plateaus plateaus are elevated flatlands it has a flat top a plateau may be higher than a mountain but it's almost flat upper surface that means the top part is totally flat and like mountains they are also categorized into old and new so old plateaus are lower and stretch over greater areas but remember they don't have peaks they are flat at the top for example dakkan plateau of india plateau of brazil australia africa are some major old plateaus of the world and the plateau of tibet to the north of himalayas is the highest plateau in the world now plateaus are also categorized into two parts first how they are formed and the second where they are formed so first let us see how they are formed they these plateaus are known as tectonic or volcanic plateaus and it means a tectonic plateau is formed when a part of the earth's surface is pushed up but not wrinkled example the plateau of tibet it is totally flat on the top it does not have any curves upside so they are known as tectonic or volcanic plateau 
depending upon where they are formed again these plateaus are categorized into four parts intermontane pedmont continental and dejected intermontane plateau is a plateau which is surrounded by mountains as the word says intermontane means in between pedmont means at the foot of the mountains a plateau which is formed at the foot of the mountains and a continental plateau means which is away from the mountains and can have oceans or plains on all the sides and the last one is dissected plateau means a plateau that is cut into sections by the valleys of rivers flowing through it then let's see the importance of plateau what are the importance of the plateau for us see these plateaus are very old and especially the old plateaus are rich in useful minerals such as iron ore and the last topic of our chapter is plains flat surfaces with gentle slopes are called plains and again they are also divided into few parts let us see the first is coastal plains coastal plains are found along the margins of the seas and ocean you can see the coastal plains as the word says coast that means near to the coast areas and where you can find the coast near to the sea or oceans next is flood plains what are flood plains flood plains are found near or along the banks of river because they get deposited by the minerals or the alluvium which are brought by the rivers and the last part is penny plains penny plains are the plains that are lowered or rugged gradually and smoothen smoothened to form nearly a plain and they are mostly found where there was long back there were mountains but then slowly slowly these mountains and plateaus they are removed by the natural process and then only a flat land is left and they are known as penny plains see the importance of plains as you know the plains are formed by the deposition of the materials brought by the rivers and they are called as alluvium okay so this alluvium or alluvial makes the so soil very fertile and thus make the plains good for the cultivation of crops now land form and people what we do how we live it's all depend upon the land form or the surrounding where we are living even our house are also made in the way that shows that where we are living or it shows the surrounding of our area okay so mountain as you know they are generally cold so people those who are living there they have hard life it is very hard for them to grow crops on the other hand if you see, see plains plains we have moderate temperature and people in plains can easily do crop cultivation because of the plenty of alluvial plain present in the plains that way you can see we are blessed as we are residing in plains so here i have completed the chapter i hope you have understood it if not please do write your questions in the comment box i will surely get back to you till the next chapter take care and be safe bye bye